In this video, we're going to work through a limit proof for a higher order polynomial, a third degree. And so again, just to begin the proof, or the work, let's remind ourselves what we're trying to show. We're trying to show that the function x cubed minus 5x squared minus x minus 2 minus the limit, which would be minus a minus 28, is less than epsilon. provided x is sufficiently close to negative 2, which means the absolute value of x plus 2 would have to be greater than 0 and less than delta. Now, in our scratch work, let's look at our function x cubed minus 5x squared minus x minus 2 plus 28, which would actually be plus 26. Now, upon inspection, we can see that if we do plug negative 2 into the function x cubed minus 5x squared minus x minus 2, we do indeed get minus 28. That means if we take the difference of that function and minus 28, which gives us this function inside the absolute value, negative 2 should be a 0 of that function. In other words, this has to factor in such a way that one of the factors is x plus 2. So of course since we know one of the factors it won't be too hard to find the others. In fact if we do a little quick work here let's synthetically divide by negative 2 into x cubed minus 5x squared minus x plus 26 so that would give us 1 and negative 2 and negative 7 and 14 and 13 and negative 26 and 0 which says the other factor up here that's missing would be x squared minus 7x plus 13. Now whether or not that quadratic factors is really immaterial it won't matter because we can still get control over the size of that whether it factors or not. So to do that we're going to use our old favorite trick which is to choose delta so that it's less than or equal to 1 which gives us the usual restriction on absolute value of x minus a in this case absolute value of x plus 2 will be less than or equal to 1 less than 1 which means x plus 2 is less than 1 greater than negative 1 now in an unusual twist let's get control only over x which means all we have to do is subtract 2 that would give us minus 3 is less than x is less than minus 1 that's what we get if we subtract 2 from all parts now what does that say about the absolute value of x well if x is between negative 3 and negative 1 it is certainly no further away from 0 than 3 which means we can definitely say the absolute value of x is less than 3. Now, going back to where we left off up here, we had the absolute value of x plus 2 times the absolute value of x squared minus 7x plus 13. Now, we know when we make our assumption and our formal proof that the absolute value of x plus 2 will be less than delta. Now, I'm also going to say this. This expression inside the absolute value can be broken up into three terms, which will be a sum of three absolute values by the triangle inequality. The absolute value of x squared minus 7x plus 13 is less than or equal to the absolute value of x squared plus the absolute value of minus 7x plus the absolute value of 13. Now, what did we just say about the absolute value of x? It's less than 3. So this is less than delta times 3 squared because absolute value of x is less than 3. What about the minus 7x? Well, we know that's equal to 
7 times the absolute value of x because we can factor the negative 7 outside of the absolute value as a positive 7. And if absolute value of x is less than 3, that means 7 times the absolute value of x is less than 21. 13 is a constant, absolute value of 13, which is just 13. So what does that give us? It gives us delta times 9 plus 21 plus 13, which is 43. So we're left with delta times a constant. We'd like to match that up with our epsilon so that we can choose our delta to be epsilon over 43. Proof. Given epsilon greater than 0, choose delta to equal the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 43. Assuming that 0 is less than the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than delta, that implies that the absolute value of our function, x cubed minus 5x squared minus x minus 2 minus our proposed limit number, which is minus 28, so that would be plus 28. And let's just make that minus 2 plus 28 a plus 26. Well, we know from our work above that that factors as x. And let's just look at that for a second because I've forgotten. It factors as x plus 2 times x squared minus 7x plus 13. So let's say x plus 2, absolute value, times absolute value x squared minus 7x plus 13. Now, by the triangle inequality, that is less than or equal to absolute value of x plus 2 times the absolute value of x squared plus the absolute value of negative 7x plus the absolute value of 13. And we are applying the triangle inequality directly to this absolute value. All right, what's that equal to? That's equal to absolute value of x plus 2 times absolute value of x squared, which is just x squared, plus absolute value of negative 7x, which is 7 times the absolute value of x, plus absolute value of 13, which is 13. We know that absolute value of x plus 2 is less than delta by assumption. And now, by our scratch work from above, since we assumed that delta was less than or equal to 1, we were able to conclude that x, let me scroll up here so you can see it, we were able to conclude that with that assumption, the absolute value of x is less than 3. So that means right here, we can say that this last part is less than delta times 3 squared plus 7 times 3 plus 13. And that was our 9 plus 21 plus 13, which was 43. But again, in our proof, we also assumed that delta is less than or equal to epsilon over 43. So at this point, we can say delta is less than or equal to epsilon over 43, which means this entire thing is less than epsilon. Therefore, by the delta epsilon limit definition, the limit as x approaches negative 2 of x cubed minus 5x squared minus x minus 2 is equal to minus 28.